students in this video lecture of software engineering we will discuss about object oriented methodologies in this video we will discuss about what is modeling and why do we model a system what are the object oriented methodologies object oriented process advantages of object oriented methodologies and we will discuss about some popular object oriented methodologies like Cord and Jordan methodology, object modeling technique, Booth methodology, and Jacobson methodology. What is modeling? A model is an abstraction of something for the purpose of understanding it before building it. Because our real systems that we want to study are generally very complex. In order to understand the real system, we have to simplify the system. So a model is an abstraction that hides the non-essential characteristics of system and highlights those characteristics which are pertinent to understand it. Most of the modeling techniques for the analysis and design used graphics. So the symbols are used according to the certain set of rules of methodology for communicating the complex relationship of information more clearly than the descriptive text. Why do we model? Before constructing anything, the designer of the system built the model and the designer built the model to test the physical entity before actually building it and to test the basics of communication between the client and the developer and, to, and for finding the different alternatives of the problem and for reducing the complexity in order to understand the system. What are object-oriented methodologies? As we live in the world of objects, these objects exist in nature, in man-made entities, in business, and in the products that we use. They can be categorized, described, organized, combined, manipulated, and created. Therefore, an object-oriented view has come into picture for the creation of software. By using object-oriented methodology, higher productivity, lower maintenance cost, and high quality can be achieved. Object-oriented methodology requires that object-oriented techniques can be used during the analysis, design, and implementation of the system. This methodology makes the analyst to determine what the objects of the system are and how they behave over time in, res in response to events and what responsibilities and relationships an object has to other objects. In object-oriented analysis, analysts look at all the objects in the system, their similarities, differences, and how the system needs to manipulate the objects. During design, overall architecture of the system is described. During implementation phase, the class objects and the interrelationships of these classes are translated and actually coded using some programming language. What are the different steps of object-oriented process? The object-oriented process includes system analysis, system design, object design, and implementation. System analysis. Based on the system study, analyst prepares a model of the desired system. The model is purely based on what the system is required to do. At this stage, the implementation details are not taken care of. Only the model of the system is prepared based on the idea that the system is made up of a set of interacting objects. The important elements of the system are emphasized. System design. Here the complete architecture of the system is designed. While designing the system, the stress lies on the objects comprising the system and not on the processes that are being carried out in the system. Object design. In this phase, the details of the system analysis and system design are implemented. The objects identified in the system 
design phase are designed. Here, the implementation of these objects is decided in the form of data structures required and the interrelationships between the objects. Implementation During this phase, the class objects and the interrelationship of these classes are translated and actually coded by using an object-oriented programming language. The required databases are created and the complete system is transformed into operational one. What is the difference between structured and object-oriented approach? In the structured approach of development, the main emphasis is on specifying and decomposing system functionally. Structured approach has certain problems such as if there is a change in the requirements of the system, then the system based on decomposing the functionality may require massive restructuring and system gradually becomes unmanageable. But in the object oriented approach, the main focus is on identifying the objects from the application domain and then to associate the procedures or methods around these identified objects. What are benefits of object oriented modeling or object oriented methodology? The system design using OOM are closer to real world problems as the real world functioning of the system can be directly mapped into system design using OOM. So it becomes easier to design and understand the design. The objects in the system are immune to the requirement changes because of data heading and encapsulation feature of the object orientation. OOM designs encourages more reusability. The classes once defined can be easily used in other applications. Another feature of reusability can be obtained by inheritance feature of object oriented orientation. Now we will discuss about some popular object oriented methodologies. Many OOM techniques and notations were given in late 80s and early 90s. The first technique was uh, Code and Jordan methodology. Another is object, mod uh, object uh, modeling technique or OMT methodology or OMT technique. And OMT was uh, discovered by James Rumberg and his team. OMT model uses three models, object model, dynamic model, and functional model. Another technique is object oriented software engineering. And this technique was given by Jacobson. Jacobson developed the object oriented software engineering and it emphasizes on the use cases and scenarios. Booch methodology. Booch developed the object oriented analysis and object oriented concepts. Now we will discuss these object oriented methodologies in detail. First is Cord and Jordan methodology. This methodology has primary strength of system analysis. It is based on technique called SOSAS. It has five steps in that in making of analysis part of their methodology. The first step in analysis is called subjects, which are data flow diagrams for the objects. The second step is the objects where they identify the object classes and class hierarchies. The third step is structures where they decompose structures into two types. One is the classification structures and composition structures. Classification structures handle the inheritance connection between the related classes and composition structures handle all other connections between the related classes. The next, next step in analysis is called attributes. And the final step is called services, where all the behaviors uh, and methods of each class are identified. Another technology or another methodology is object modeling technique. Object modeling technique is an object oriented software development methodology given by James Rumbach and his team. 
This methodology describes a method for analysis, design, and implementation of system using object-oriented technique. It is a fast, intuitive approach for identifying and modeling all the objects for making a system. The OMT, OMT consists of three related but different viewpoints, each capturing important aspects of the system, that is the static, the dynamic and functional behaviors of the system. These are described by object model, dynamic model and functional model of OMT. These three models are discussed here in detail. First is the object model. This model is used for describing the objects in the system and their relationship among each other in the system. Object model describes the object in the system and their interrelationships. This model observes all the objects as static and does not pay any attention to the dynamic nature. Means timing is not included in such models. Dynamic model describes the interaction among the objects and the information flow in the system. The dynamic model shows the time dependent behavior of the system and objects in it. Dynamic model depicts the dynamic aspects of the system. It portrays the changes occurring in the states of the various objects with the events that might occur in the system. It includes state transition diagrams and event diagrams. Functional model. The data transformation in the system are described by the functional model. This describes the flow of data and the changes that occur in the data throughout the system. It includes DFD, that is data flow diagram. Next is Booth methodology and Booth gave two development process or two viewpoints. First is macro development process and micro development process. Macro development process includes five steps. First is conceptualization, concept, conceptualization which includes core requirements and goal of the system. And second is analysis and development of uh, model, the class, object and interaction diagrams for roles and responses. Design and uh, design system architecture, it schedules for multiple processes. Fourth is evolution or Im implementation. Fifth is maintenance, means making localized changes to the system to add new requirements. Second viewpoint is on the micro development process. It includes identification of classes and objects, identification of class and object semantics, identification of classes and objects relationships, identification of class and object interfaces and implementation. The next methodology is object oriented software engineering. And this methodology was given by Jacobson and it is also called a Jacobson methodology. The methodology has primary strength in describing the use cases and object-oriented software engineering. It includes five types, of, five types of models. Use case model, it defines the outside actors and inside functions of the system behavior. Second is domain objective object model. The objects of real worlds are mapped into the domain specific model. Third is analysis object model. It presents how source code should be written. Fourth is implementation model. It represents the implementation of the system. And fifth is test model. It includes the test plans, specifications and reports. Origin of UML. UML is a unified modeling language and it was developed to standardize the large number of object-oriented modeling notations. As, there, as we already discussed that there are different popular methodologies by, given by different authors. It is needless to say that UML has borrowed many concepts from these three modeling techniques 
that is object modeling technique or OMT of Rumbuck, Booth methodology and object oriented software engineering by Jacobson. The influence from these three methodologies is shown in the schematic diagram and from the figure it is clear that OMT has most profound influence on UML. Students, if you have not seen the previous videos of this channel, then please see all the previous videos in the playlist of this channel.